ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد we begin by praising allah we praise him we seek his help and we ask for his forgiveness and we take refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil consequence of our evil actions whoever Allah guides no one can misguide but whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray none can guide and i testify that Allah alone is worthy of worship and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his servant and his messenger brothers and sisters i want to pick up where the brother left off in the video we just watched and i'm going to tell you a story about a man who some years ago during the first iraqi war the first war um used to stand outside the white house every single night with a lit candle and one night it was a particularly foul night very windy very cold rain and this guy appeared as usual standing there he had an umbrella holding the candle and the security guard at the gate of the white house saw this man and he said to him he'd been noticing him standing there night after night day after day for months and months and he said to him listen you know no one's going to see you tonight you know it's cold it's wet and just go home i mean you know i really respect what you're doing but you don't really think that you're going to change those people in that place do you and the man turned to the security guard he said i don't do it to change them i do it so they won't change me you know brothers and sisters i want i want you to link that to dawa because you know and i know that we can't make anyone muslim we know we can't make people muslim brothers and sisters guidance is not in our hand but you know something allah has given you responsibility over and that's your own iman that's maintaining your own iman maintaining the status of your iman that is something you have to take care of it's more important than taking care of your family it's more important than taking care of your mother and your father it's more important than you taking care of even your own body your own self it is you know the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that if you if that he sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not more beloved if he is not more beloved to us than our fathers and our mothers and our families in fact the whole of mankind indeed even our own selves we have to love rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam more than our own selves if we don't do that we haven't completed our iman and i want us to think about that man and what he said and how that links to dawa because what he realized is that there is something he had to do for himself that however bad the world became however corrupt people were however evil and how much evil was indulged in by politicians he didn't want that to change him and you know the worst destruction brothers and sisters is if your own iman is destroyed there's nothing worse than that there's no earthquake to match it there's no tsunami to compare to it there's no flooding to equal it there is no famine there is no droughts 
that is even remotely comparable in its level of calamity to you losing your Iman. But you know and I know, that's what we see happening around us to our own sons, our own daughters, our brothers, our sisters, every single day. For as many of you that are in this room today, how many are not? And how do you keep your Iman in a place like this? How do you maintain your Iman in a place like this? I absolutely believe, brothers and sisters, that it is virtually impossible for you as an individual, and even if you survive, I do not believe your children will survive if you are not giving dawah. I don't know of anything that has the capacity in our situation here to maintain and even boost our levels of Iman like Dawa. In fact, one Sheikh once said to me many years ago, his name is Sheikh Muhammad ibn Ismail. And I have to mention him. And he's not a well-known sheikh, but he is one of the few sheikhs I have ever met who not only gives lip service to dawah, and you'll find many will say dawah is important, you should give dawah, we should give dawah. And I mean here specifically, by the way, dawah to non-Muslims. That's what I'm talking about. Of course, dawah is a general term that can be applied, applied linguistically to every type of enjoining the right and forbidding the wrong. But I'm being very specific, brothers. IRA has a very specific objective and goal, and that is calling those people who are not yet Muslim to Islam. So a lot of people talk about it. I haven't found many sheikhs doing it. He was one who actually did it. He made a real effort within his own capacity. And he came down to Speaker's Corner many years ago to see what I was doing there because there was a big controversy at the time. Some of the brothers were saying, Abdurrahim Green, the way he goes down to Speaker's Corner and he talks like that, it's not the way of the Salaf. I said, brothers, you know, that's very strange to me because the one who is, the one who represents the Salaf, is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he used to go down to the Kaaba where they were worshipping 360 idols and people used to make tawaf naked. And I'm not saying Rasulullah was there when they used to make tawaf naked, but they used to make tawaf naked. Naked. And he used to go down there and give them da'wah and pray there. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I, I said, I don't think Speaker's Corner is as bad as that. So, I mean, that's my example. I, I don't know who they were thinking of when they say the Salaf. So I, I, but you know, because when brothers say things to you and this and that, and the brothers you're with, you know, they, they can get you confused. So I asked the Sheikh to come down. Tell me, Sheikh, what do you think of what I'm doing? So he stayed there the whole day. MashaAllah. He said to me something really precious, brothers and sisters, that despite I've had many job offers, come to Qatar, run our center, come to Melbourne in Australia, nice sun, beach, well, not that you can really go to the beach as a Muslim, but you know, <laughs> maybe when it's quiet, you know, give, give some dawah on the beach maybe, yeah? <laughs> you know, I, I've been offered to go and have jobs, you know, Dubai, wherever. But you know, I'm still here. And it's a lot to do with something that Sheikh said to me. And it's also a feeling I've always had in my heart. That, you know, this is my land. These are my people. You know, I have a task. I have a job to do. And the Sheikh said to me, Abdurrahim, he said, I will give you a piece of advice. Never leave what you are doing. Never leave this dawah even if the Khilafah is established. 
stay in this land as long as you are having some success stay here and keep giving dawah he said your dawah here is more rewardable than if you prayed in the Kaaba every single day that's what he said subhanallah I said really Sheikh he said yes and you know what's what what's the proof for that and he quoted a famous poem which is attributed to Abdullah ibn Muburak, who was a great scholar. And in his time, there was a man called Qadi Iyad, who was known as the Imam of the Haram, because he, you know, he was he used to be in the Kaaba and used to cry and cry and cry, and he was so famous. And Abdullah ibn Muburak wrote a poem to him, and basically, Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Muburak used to spend. One year studying knowledge and one year in the path of Allah, struggling in the path of Allah. And he wrote, an, uh, he wrote a poem to this Imam of the Haram or this great scholar, saying how your tears are making marks on your face, whereas the dust of us being in the path of Allah is making our reward so great with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was comparing really the reward of being in the path of Allah. And the point being is that the companions also, very few of them died in Mecca and Medina. They went out and they spread Islam. If the best place to be was Mecca and Medina, they would have stayed there. They never would have moved. But the best place to be is in the path of Dawah, calling people out of darkness into light. And that's why I feel really sorry I've seen some of our best brothers, and I, really, really good brothers. And when I say good brothers, I mean brothers on the dawah. Go and live in Dubai and Saudi. And I feel, really, it's like you've left the battlefield. Alhamdulillah, I wish them the best. But I don't wish to join them. Because you know what? Here's where you'll find real iman. If you take this path. And I really believe, brothers and sisters, if you are not involved in dawah, you are going to be destroyed. You will be destroyed. I believe that because that's what Allah said in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you all know this surah. He swore by time. That all of the human beings, in al insana, verily, the insan, the human beings, the mankind, are in a state of loss. All of them, we're all lost. Except, and then Allah made an exception. Illa amanu. Except those who have iman. True faith. Iman is true faith. Wa amilu salihat. And they do righteous actions. But Allah didn't leave it there, brothers and sisters. Notice. Allah did not finish the surah with iman and amil salih But Allah added two more things. And they joined together to teach the truth. And again, they support each other upon patience. Because you will not have iman and you will not do righteous deeds and you will never be in the path of dawah except with sabr, except with patience. Otherwise, you are lost, brothers and sisters. You are lost. You will be lost. And Allah warns us in the Quran that if your homes in which you delight and your businesses in which you fear a decline and your families, if these things are more beloved to you than Allah and His Messenger, and striving hard in his path, then wait until Allah brings his decision. And Allah's decision, the Mufassirun, the people who explain the Quran, they said, it is his punishment. Brothers and sisters, it is dawah or destruction. You don't have a choice. Either you are giving dawah, or someone is giving dawah to you. Either you are acting or you are being acted upon. Either you are calling people to Islam or for sure, brothers and sisters, 
They are calling you 24-7, 365 